Hey guys, what's up? Uh, today I'm going to give you a little bit of pointers and kind of a walkthrough on how to do the electric fan conversion on an Escalade. Now, there's a lot of these videos um, for most other NBS trucks. I guess you would call them NBS, the 99 to 04 trucks that didn't have the electric fans in them. They instead had the clutch fan, which I have here. I've already taken out. Um, but I want to kind of, I was midway through this process. I was like, let's kind of make a small walkthrough. A lot of the videos are like 40 minutes long. I want to keep this to like under 10 minutes so you can really get a grasp on how to do it in a short amount of time. It's actually really easy. The most involved step is um, tuning your ECU and you can just take it to a local tuner. I'm getting mine tuned for like 150 bucks. Um, it's usually like $100 in credits for HP tuners. But once you put the electric fans in, you have to program your ECU to tell them to turn on because it's used to having the clutch fan. So what you gotta do, you're gonna get your engine bay with an eight millimeter, take this engine cover off, boom. That same eight millimeter can be used to take this loose, this air intake here, your, it can take that, it can take that screw loose right there. You wiggle this off, set it up to the side here so it's kind of out of the way. Next, you're gonna use one of these pry tools and you're going to take all the little plastic clips out of this um, uh, radiator cover, I guess is what you'd call it. You're gonna take all those out, you're gonna lift it out, and then you're going to take the upper radiator cover out, which is this has four of the same kind of uh, clips that you need one of these tools for. And then you're going to take two screws out of the front of it. These are the screws, I believe they're, and those bolts are 10 millimeter, classic GM. Now the next step I did was to take the clutch fan off. You can do this in various steps. I just did the clutch fan first, and then I'm gonna take this lower um, fan shroud off, the lower fan shroud piece, that plastic piece needs to come off. Also your radiator needs to be the 34 inch core, not the 28 inch core, easy way to tell. Look at the bolt holes. You need this and this bolt hole, both of these bolt holes, and then your outside bolt hole will be this. This means you have the 34 inch radiator, which I do. I have the upgraded radiator. I'm not sure if it's in all the Escalades, but I'm not sure. So I won't have to do a radiator flush, drain the fluid, put the new radiator none of that all i have to do is slip the fans in um, wire it in with the nelson performance harness which i'll show you and then um, program it with the ecu all right you're gonna need these fans as well these are what i got is the dorman 620652 um, fans now these are it's a dual seven blade fan there are five there are five blade and seven blade fans it's like a five blade seven blade there's like a seven blade nine blade i haven't seen the seven seven before but this is a seven blade seven blade dual seven blade fan and i'm not sure if these are going to pull the higher there's either like from what i understand there's either a 300 watt motor or a 500 watt motor in the fans and this probably uses the 500 watt motors because they're the, both the seven blade fans maybe i'm not 100 sure but you can check your rpo codes or you can just look at your alternate alternator and if you have the big fat extended alternator like that if there's like this black gap in the middle that means it's a bigger alternator that you probably have the 145 amp alternator which is the kg3 option on your vin or sorry not on your vin on your rpo codes if you look at your rpo codes they're the list of the three digit codes i think they're in your glove box um, if you look at those and you have kg3 then you have the 145 amp alternator which is the upgraded alternator which should handle these just fine and my nelson performance harness is just now showing up perfect timing all right that is my nelson harness i'll open that in a second one last thing you're going to need is going to be these bolts um, so you can either get the factory bolts these are the factory bolts um, and these are basically an eight what they are is an eight millimeter by 1.25 pitch and they're 50 millimeters long so when you go to your hardware store you need to get eight millimeter 1.25 pitch and 50 millimeters is the length of these but i heard you might need shorter i'm not sure i'll find out so i got 40 millimeters as well just in case and then and then washers but i'm hoping to use the stock screws um also note on the clutch fan when you're trying to remove it um you can get a clutch fan removal tool some people use the uh, big adjustable wrench i didn't have an adjustable wrench that was big enough to go around that clutch fan looks like i need to upgrade my tools <laughs> but you go to o'reilly's you need the 67063 rental tool and it's going to come with the 36 millimeter wrench i just put that on there just tapped it one time with the rubber mallet and boom it was off also i'm going to link everything down below that i'm using here just so you guys can reference it all right, I just got the bottom fan shroud out. There's one hole here, and all that's in that hole is the clips for your cooler lines. The, this clip right here goes into it. You can leave that out. And now it is time to throw our new fan in. Okay, fans are going in. I'm just going to move this hose. Slip this down on in there if I can get stuff out of the way. See how it slips right in between? That's why you have to have the 34 inch radiator core. Maybe get down in there.
Okay, there we go. With that, just kind of take your time. Don't freak out. Just work it around the tubes. Let's get these bolts installed here. These are the factory bolts. Let's see if they're too long. Here, we're using the Milwaukee on the next one. Sheesh. Quicker. Also keep in mind that I bought a brand new fan. You don't need to buy a brand new fan. It's a little bit of peace of mind for me to have a brand new fan, but you can go to a junkyard and get a fan and you actually don't have the problem with sourcing these bolts once you buy one of these fans because it's going to come with it. The bolts should come with it. And this clamps right into here in the stock location. Right in there, maybe. It'll go in. There we go. Now we just wire in the Nelson performance harness. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try not to film me doing this. I'm gonna film, show you afterwards how I did it. Um, and then we'll go from there. All right, and this is the Nelson performance harness. Um, you've got your two fan clips here. These are what plug into your fans and then it runs. And then I believe you're supposed to screw these onto, uh, not the bulkhead, but somewhere in the, uh, the cabin there. And they provide these three self tapping screws for that. And then uh, one of these sets of wires goes to positive, one goes to negative. I'm assuming black is negative, I don't know. And then these get pinned into your ECU. Um, I'm going, I'm assuming the tuner I'm using is gonna take the ECU out and tune through the ECU. So I'm just gonna wait until he takes it out to pin these, take it apart one time, do everything all at once versus, versus taking it apart, pinning it, and then taking it apart again at the tuners. And these are the instructions that come with the Nelson Performance Harness. If you wanna freeze frame, um, you can, just some nice color photos, of course, how thoughtful, you know. Um, if you wanna freeze frame on any of that, and then I'll flip it over. There's some more instructions. It seems pretty simple, um, but if you do wanna pause the video on any of this, you can. I'll kinda pause the camera in certain spots so it's easier for you to pause and get a better picture. Okay, I got the wiring harness installed. Let me kinda walk you through that. Um, the two blue power wires go, you have to take this cover off, at least get under here. And those two go on the back of your alternator with a 10 millimeter bolt. You need an eight millimeter to get this off, to get this cover off, to get it loosened. And then the ground wires went to the top of this bracket that holds the distribution block on to there. Now the direction said something about an additional green wire to splice into, but I didn't get anything like that in my kit, so I'm assuming mine doesn't need it. The three relays are mounted on the box uh, that cover the PCM. I went ahead and repinned because the guy that's tuning is gonna use OBD2 instead of my plugging, uh, plugging into a bench with the PCM. When you're pinning those wires, put a little bit of grease on them. It'll help that metal go through and you have to, it goes way down farther than you think. You can literally watch it go through. Um, and if you have problems, what I did was I took, I took a pair of needle nose pliers. Let's pretend this is the, let's pretend this is the wire. I just took them and pushed it and used them to push it in. I used the needle nose, nose pliers to push it in. I got more even pressure that way and was able to get it in that way. So when you're pinning your harness, it's a little bit frustrating, but it will, you will be able to do it. Okay, so now I just button this all back up, put the intake on, put the cover back on. Um, plug my negative battery cable back in. Don't forget to disconnect this before you start doing work. Uh, do all that, take it to the tuner, get it tuned, and I'm good to go. All right, guys, took it to the tuner. Fans are tuned into the PCM, um, worked flawlessly. Uh, we triggered the fans while we were there. The fans worked fine. Um, and then we set the temperatures for them, turned them on. I think I paid $150. HP tuners charges like a hundred bucks just to unlock the VIN so you can mess with it. Um, and then the guy charged me like 50 bucks just to turn the fans on on top of that. So that was a pretty sweet deal. I took it for a drive for about 30 to 40 minutes after that. One thing I definitely felt was air conditioning was way improved. Um, I had went to get my air conditioning recharged because I thought it was low. It was not low. Um, the clutch, the fan clutch, uh, just wasn't really keeping up with what it needed to do to cool the condenser off. And so these electric fans helped a ton. So I had like actually really cold AC just driving around. Normally at highway speeds, I get pretty cool AC, but this just driving around 30, 45 miles an hour had great AC, really nice. I didn't feel any uh, speed difference. I know you gain a little bit of horsepower. I'm not really throttling this 
thing that much. I mean, I just kind of cruise. Um, I think it's supposed to give you better gas mileage too because you're not spinning the big clutch fan. Um, again, I'll link everything I use down in the description below. It's just something I wanted to do because I didn't see anybody do it on an Escalade or like a truck that already had the 34 inch radiator. But yeah, both fans are working great. It is the dual seven blade fan. I'll link that down below. Um, I don't know um, what the, if they're both 500 watt motors, it might be worth more to get the nine blade fan, the seven and nine blade. Uh, but I don't know, I don't know if that's more expensive or not. But the alternator seems to be keeping up just fine. I have the 145 amp in here, like I said earlier, um, and I'm getting like the, I'm charging it like 14 volts. So it's not, it's not uh, throttling my charging system or anything like that. So it's so far so good. Any questions you have, throw them in the comments down below. I'll try to help you out. And you can subscribe if you're into car stuff. I do a whole series on this. I got a third gen Camaro to do a series on. A bunch of cars I do series stuff on. Okay, hit the like button if you found it helpful. Um, again, comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're into that kind of stuff. Later guys, bye.